Let's talk some Javon Kinlaw. I was not very impressed with Javon Kinlaw when I started watching the film of him. He has some improvements to make. And so I'm going to talk about the issues and where I think he can improve because I actually don't think it's necessarily like he just sucks and get rid of him. I just think that there are definitive things he has to improve upon. And I think he could potentially do it. And one of the things he has to do is just stay on the field, which hopefully next year he will. But anyway, starting off with the bad, and then we will get into kind of, I think, the positives in a second. But right now, he's getting blocked one-on-one -on -one against a center. This is a great center, Jason Kelsey, one of the best, uh, you know, to ever do it for the Philadelphia Eagles. So while there is no shame in losing to him one-on-one, -on -one, you still would ideally like a defensive tackle who's good to be able to win some one-on-one -on -one reps against a center. Instead, as you see, Kinlaw really gets pushed well, you know, off to the side. Now, there was a play action, so it maybe made it look a little worse. As a certain point, Kinlaw realized, oh, okay, I don't have to actually get over there. But he didn't know that at the beginning of the play and still got pushed over relatively far to the side. So, again, this is kind of what I saw with Kinlaw. I was very much not impressed when watching his film. I rarely saw him win. I often saw him lose. Like, this is another example of what's going to happen, where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You have a uh, left tackle, actually, who's going to pull over, and he's going to be the one blocking Kinlaw on this play. And as you see, he does a good job at getting over quickly. So that part, again, good stuff from, listen, you're playing the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line. You're going to play some good players. They, that is what it is. This is Jordan Mailata, who was the third highest rated tackle according to PFF last year. So that's who you're going up against. Good talent, all that stuff. I wouldn't want to be in this situation if I'm Kinlaw. But as you see, Mailata does push Kinlaw off to the side and Kinlaw isn't really able to get into that play, even if he had to. It was already, you know, uh, the rest of the defensive line did their job on that one. But again, got moved out of the way against good offensive linemen. So good offensive linemen are not really having much of an issue with Kinlaw. But even like something like this now, where we can go over to Isaac Sumalo, who is, you know, he was a guard who was, you know, only played 168 snaps last year, has mostly been a fine depth player for Philadelphia over his career. Uh, what you're going to see him do here is, you know, really, I mean, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And I mean, just watch as he's, you know, Kinlaw's just not able to get anything going whatsoever. There's a quick throw and a quick completion. So maybe if it went on longer, you would have had a pressure or something. But like, there's just, there's not much going there. And the reality is what I watched of Kinlaw, I watched his, you know, his entire 2021 season, which wasn't that much because he only played four games, but still watched all those and went back and watched some of his previous uh, tape from the years prior. And well, again, there were some flashes in 2020. Some of the flashes weren't even that impressive. Like here, uh, I want to talk about this is, you know, the guy has one and a half sacks to his name. This is half of one of those sacks where what's going to happen is it's going to be a one on one matchup and watch what happens. Again, as you see, Kinlaw really not getting much going here. And at this point, I would probably consider this like a loss rep, right? You would probably say, hey, good job by the guard. Now, fortunately, the play doesn't end for Kinlaw. Winston tries to scramble out. Kinlaw is able to get over and help make that tackle. And listen, that's valuable. There is value in that. And that's kind of my last point about Kinlaw that I want to make sure I make is even though I've just completely bashed him for, you know, the first half of this video, and, you know, it's true, he has not played spectacularly. The flip side with that is that there still is a lot of talent with Kinlaw. The guy had good advanced statistics in college. He had great tape in college. I was a big fan of him and liked the draft selection. Didn't love the trade at the time to get rid of Buckner, but that's a different discussion. I liked Kinlaw as a player, uh, and a lot of it was, some of it was just like he had some star level plays, and it kind of got me thinking. So we're going to talk about this play now, where what happens on this play is you have Kinlaw going one-on-one -on -one against a center, and watch what's going to happen. I mean, watch him just annihilate that center, drives him straight back, and then is able to get over and generate a pressure, eventually gets to Tua for the sack. So really good play, right? Fantastic job to be able to do that. And I think that's maybe part of my my theory with Kinlaw is he might be someone who just doesn't have the best technique and kind of got by due to his just pure athleticism. So the question is going to be asked, is Javon Kinlaw a bust? Well, first, we have to establish some things, right? Here are the facts. The facts are that Kinlaw's statistics are not very good. The other fact is when I watched his film, I did not like it. Now, that's an opinion, but the fact is that my opinion of him was not that he wasn't very good, or it was that he wasn't very good. I misspoke there. Uh, so with those two facts in place, 
you could do several different things with it. Does that make him a bust? Well, I mean, first, you might disagree with saying, you know, the fact that I thought that he didn't play too well, which in which case we just disagree and that's, you know, the end of the conversation. Or uh, maybe you don't mind that his statistics weren't that great because football is a sport about, you know, more than just what kind of numbers you put up, which is also fair, although I would say there's advanced numbers that factor into that. But regardless, Maybe that's your opinion, in which case I'm not sure we're going to get much further in this discussion. But let's just accept those ground rules that he has not shown much in his little over one season of play because he did not play much uh, last year. I think it's fair to say that he still isn't necessarily a bust yet, even if you accept all of those premises, because defensive tackles, especially big defensive tackles, Take some time to figure it out. And Kinlaw is exactly the kind of guy who I feel like if he takes a step forward, you look back and say, well, yeah, that makes sense. Because in college, he so much relied on his, you know, freakish abilities and his athleticism and his, you know, big size. The play I showed you of him being able to just kind of, you know, bull rush a center till he falls down and then get to the quarterback. In the NFL, guys just won't let you do that. And so you have to work on a technique. You have to work on other things. And that just takes some time. And there's an adjustment period there. We saw Rashawn Gary, another guy kind of in a similar mold as Ken Law, who did not break out until his third season. So there is there is some precedent here with, you know, uh, at least edge rushers. And there's precedent with defensive tackles as well, kind of improving as they go along. So there is definitely some, some hope and some value there with Kinlaw. So that's the that's the first major point is that yeah, there is hope. Although I would say again, part of me does kind of think about you traded Buckner because you didn't want to have to pay for a good defensive tackle. Uh you felt like getting rid of Buckner and you know making this move in a vacuum could allow you to get a good defensive tackle for cheap. And unfortunately, you know, if Kinlaw does break out next year, that'd be great. But you kind of, you know, the plan hasn't fully worked out because soon you'll have to pay Kinlaw if he does end up breaking out. But still, you'd rather that, you know, that's not, not the worst problem in the world to have. So as a whole, I think that he is, I'm, I'm going to say, not quite yet a bust. And they're actually, I'm not just saying that in like a, yeah, there's a 1% chance, you know, because anyone could be successful. Who knows? Uh, maybe Nathan Peterman will finally pull it together. Like, you know, I get, there's always a small chance with anybody. But with Kinlaw, uh, you know, I think there is at least a decent chance that he improves gets the technique down, and then can kind of become a more complete uh, defensive tackle. And he didn't get to play much last year. That's the final point, is that, you know, that's kind of the year that you're supposed to start to figure this stuff out. Didn't get to do it, and that is going to, you know, stunt his uh, development a little bit. But I still, uh, I'm not giving up on Ken Law by any means. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.